After years of begging, pleading, and I'm sure an act or two Reynolds would prefer never came to light, the Mad Lad actually did it, convincing Hugh Jackman to inject more steroids than a Mr. Olympia, fit him in a comic-accurate suit, and brought us Deadpool and Wolverine. Several years after the events of Deadpool 2, Wade Wilson hung up his costume to live a normal life and ended up a car salesman. Like any Hollywood hopeful, he dreams of accomplishing something bigger, something greater, and on his birthday, Wade's wish is granted. He's brought to the stupidest place in the MCU, the TV. It is here Mr. Paradox, who works at the TVA, gives Wade the choice to join the official MCU timeline and maybe become an Avenger. But whether Wade does or not doesn't matter, because his universe is about to be destroyed anyway. One convoluted explanation of stupid multiverse rules later, and Deadpool has teamed up with another universe's Wolverine, and the duo works together to save Wade's universe from being destroyed by Mr. Paradox. Now, as this movie has only been out for a week and highly anticipated, I'm going to avoid spoilers for those who haven't seen Deadpool 3. So I won't be going as in-depth as I normally would in this video, though I might later during a stream or spoiler video if people want it. Alright, for starters, Deadpool and Wolverine is hilarious. I think the last time I laughed this hard at a comedy in theaters was the first Deadpool, which either proves I think too hard about movies, or Hollywood's attempts have been as dry as sandpaper labia. Timing is better in this one. Situations aren't absurd like the Zamboni from the first Deadpool, but pauses and cuts lead to to better impact for some of the jokes, like when Wade tries to rally the troops for the final assault and look and shits on it at the end. Now that's not to say all the jokes land, there are a few gags that I feel like were written by James Gunn running on way longer than they ever should have and killing the joke. Now the action, while a little repetitive at times, is another strong point of the film. Deadpool was always decent at action, nothing amazing, but certainly not laughable like the Marvels or Rings of Power. What elevates Deadpool and Wolverine is that we finally get to see a healthy and roided out Wolverine rip and tear until it is done. Logan certainly scratched that itch years back, but it wasn't quite enough for the fans. Well, in fan service fashion, you'll be bouncing your leg like Thumper as Wolverine and others slice and dice their way through characters like Quentin Tarantino was behind the camera. Speaking of fan service, Wolverine isn't the only character we see make a return after all these years. A few characters from the franchise's past rustled the jimmies of many a fan, and two in particular practically turned me into Leonardo DiCaprio. So, seeing as the the mission statement was to please fans, I would say Deadpool and Wolverine achieves that goal. Wade's antics bounce off Logan very well, and the two have great chemistry on screen. There are plenty of throwbacks to previous Marvel titles, and the credits solidify how much of a love letter this movie was to not only the fans, but also pre-MCU Marvel's experimental phase. So if that's all you're looking for, Deadpool and Wolverine will please you. However, if the discussion were about the quality of the story, characters, and choices, then Deadpool and Wolverine fails like Marvel post-Endgame. Considering there are five writing credits, I can't help but wonder if there was dispute about the direction to take this movie. Numerous scenes run on, like, again, some of the jokes, lessening the impact of what is supposed to be an either fun or tense moment, while other times, when scenes are played straight, they are short, concise, and effective. The pacing is off as well. Structurally, Deadpool 3 is basically the same as the previous too, but where the first Deadpool was a well-fitted suit, this one has moved the belt buckle a few loops. The near entire second act drags on and bloats itself with setups for gags towards the end that only serve to distract from the mission at hand and extend the runtime. The antagonists also drive me insane. The TVA is already incredibly stupid, but when Mr. Paradox decides to offer Wade the chance to jump universes, then becomes the Pikachu meme face when Wade tries to save his own universe, I just about threw my phone at the screen. Why even make the offer in the first place? The story is so contrived, and with another villain, as is shown in the movie, who can do just about anything with a flick of a wrist, who doesn't do anything, lest the film end, I couldn't help but feel a little condescended. So there you have my non-spoiler review of Deadpool and Wolverine. For fan service, humor, and action, the movie gets a passing grade, but in character, choices, plot, writing, world building, and the like, it fails, although it is still worth the watch. Now let's hope this movie's success doesn't get to Kevin Feige's head and think Marvel is safe, or else they'll flood us with more content we don't care about. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.